Hi and welcome to episode 14 of Metastatic Modernity. I'm Tom Murphy and this episode is the namesake of the series where I'll compare modernity to cancer. It offers a key perspective on our strange times. It helps to make a parallel between an organism and the community of life. In an organism, each organ has a role. It's interdependent on the health of the other organs. The organs aren't arranged in some pile, they're engaged in numerous relationships. You'll never see a lone intestine roaming the streets trying to make ends meet. Um, and likewise, a species is a member in the community of life. Interdependent relationships in a web, very complicated web. There's no such thing as a squirrel without the surrounding ecological support from the community of life. And the squirrel also contributes to the community of life by planting trees, spreading nutrients, uh, various other things, I'm sure. Uh, and in both cases, you've got this co-evolution process. The constituents remain in this close relationship throughout the stomach, you know, evolving, developing in lockstep with the kidneys and the lungs and everything else. And likewise, ecological relationships are always present in an evolutionary setting. They never go on vacation. And meanwhile, cancer afflicts a single organ, but that can take down the whole organism. And it's to the cancer's own detriment. I mean, it depends itself on the health of the host. And similarly, modernity afflicts just one species, but the whole community of life suffers as a result, like for instance, kicking off a six mass extinction. And like cancer, modernity's success is its own undoing. So what comes next, I'll present five shared attributes between cancer and modernity. So first, in both cases, Cancer and modernity are anomalous. They're new to the scene. They're a kind of random mutation or a mode that came out of nowhere. And this mode is new compared to the long life that persisted prior to its arrival. And it leads to uncharacteristic behavior. In this case, the new characteristic is unchecked growth. Uh, and then the pressure from the swelling leads to dysfunction of the organism. It impairs the whole organism or community of life. Now, cancer or modernity could afflict any organ or species. Some are more vulnerable than others, lungs, colons, breasts, prostates, for example. Here I've shown cancer afflicting the, the pancreas. Modernity uh, landed on humans. And, you know, it's maybe no surprise. A uh, large part of it is that we're vulnerable because of our versatile and I would say superficial brains. But I don't want to blame the victim. I want to be careful about that. The pancreas is not at fault for developing cancer. Uh, it happened to the pancreas. And likewise, modernity happened to humans. So I think some sympathy is called for. Now, neither cancer nor modernity participate in biological evolution. I mean, there's no passing on of genes. It's not integrated in reciprocal relation uh, to the rest of the, the system, there's no path to sustain itself. Um, so it's not in relationship to the organism or community of life. Uh, essentially, you know, it's not a form of life. Cancer is not a form of life. Modernity is not a form of life. It lacks that necessary two-way uh, support structure. Both cancer and modernity act like hungry zombies. I mean, they just consume and increasingly deprive the rest of the community of resources, starving out either the organism or the community of life. The, you know, in the case of modernity, it's consuming habitat, destroying environmental contexts. And then, you know, it metastasizes or spreads. So it might start small, but eventually all corners of the organism or the globe are covered and hardly any organ or species is not impacted in the end. And increasingly the impacts and the impairments are, are very direct to the functions of those species or organs. What's good for cancer tends to be bad for the host. Uh, a doctor or any doctor you'd want wouldn't prioritize the cancer's prosperity because you know cancer has no role in a healthy body, it has no place. So you know, the question, should a doctor prioritize modernity? Um, I'm a doctor <laughs> in a weird kind of way. Um, 
it, I think it'd be inconsistent with the kind of do no harm motto because, you know, neither cancer nor modernity are a viable form of life. Modernity brings overwhelmingly negative impacts to the community of life whose health, it turns out, is vital to human well-being. You can't even have modernity without a healthy ecosystem, it turns out, in you know, the long run. So there's no room in a healthy ecology for a modernity tumor. Okay, I showed this figure in episode 7 of Mammal Mass Distributions. Humans and our domesticated extensions have crowded out wild, uh, the wild mammals and pushed them over into the corners. And it's kind of like a tumor pushing on the adjacent organs and, um, you know, impacting their ability to, to survive. And, you know, so wildlife is really struggling in the, um, in the face of modernity to survive. Uh, it's important to notice that, or to, to note that a tumor swollen organ is not its true self. It's not in its natural state. Likewise, the modernity enlarged human population is not the true nature of a human population. It's taken us far out of our ecological, ecological context. And I want to stress that, you know, humans are not the cancer. So don't get me wrong there. Uh, don't take it personally. It, it, you know, clouds, eclipses the message. Um, it's just that we're under the influence of this kind of faulty program that's afflicted humans. And then the human organ, if you will, has swollen to these dangerous sizes. Uh, I'll point out also that some humans resisted that disease, but, you know, didn't fare too well in that resistance. And now it's metastatic. It's, it's spread. It's gone everywhere. But let's not blame the victim again. Uh, it's not the pancreas's fault that it develops cancer. The pancreas is a good organ. It has a place, a role in the body, just like humans have a place and a role in an ecology. So both cancer and modernity are incredibly hard to stop once metastasized, especially. Uh, moder at this point, you know, modernity is firmly rooted in global cultures, fully entrenched, basically in control. Um, now, I've compared modernity to a technological boat on a raging river that's heading for a waterfall. Um, you know, the boat basically has no choice but to go over. It's what unsustainable fabrications really have to do. Uh, now, humans are in the boat, and a lot of them are enjoying the thrill of the ride, but humans don't have to go down with the boat. So abandoning the boat is an option, even though it might seem very scary. Okay, no metaphor or analogy is perfect, and there are a few things I don't like about this one, and so I'll just put those out there. First, growth has been identified as the essential problem. And yeah, it's true that runaway tumor growth is unsurvivable. And likewise, uh, growth on a finite planet just simply can't continue. But I don't want to give the misimpression that halting at today's scale would work. It really wouldn't. We're utterly reliant on non-renewable resources and materials. Um, we fail to use materials that are processed by and useful to the community of life. So it's a big disconnect there. We failed to establish, or modernity has failed to establish, a rich set of ecological reciprocal relationships in the web of life. So in that sense, modernity is not of this world, um, even without further growth. Second, um, cancer lacks the perks of modernity. Uh, modernity has a lot of likes that we covered in episode 10, but accompanied by a lot of dislikes, the disease part. A better analogy, though, would be if cancer had a lot of perks, like, you know, what if you didn't have to sleep and you could get a lot more done? Or what if everything you tasted was like chocolate or, you know, your favorite food? Um, or maybe it brings chronic euphoria, maybe even addictive uh, levels of euphoria. And, you know, a lot of people accept modernity because the likes are so good, even if it's terminal. And I wonder if people would accept cancer more if it had the same likes. So that... That doesn't quite work in the analogy. Um, and the third thing is that cancer really kills its host unless it's defeated. And the, the truth is, I think modernity need not do so, even if it runs its whole course. So in this sense, modernity isn't as deadly as cancer. And I want to be clear that modernity, in the case of modernity, it has no choice but to end. It's not a sustainable uh, mode of living on this planet. But I think it's very likely humans will survive its end, however that comes about, 
and start experimenting with new or probably some old ways of living on this planet that almost have to be in closer connection with local ecological realities. So the diagnosis is terminal for modernity, but not necessarily for humans. I think it's crucial not to conflate these two. Okay, so that's it for this time. Next time we're going to look at what now? How do we react to this diagnosis? And in the meantime, I encourage you as always to look at the companion write-up to this episode at the Do The Math blog, dothemath.ucsd.edu. Okay, then next time.